Hello everyone, welcome to Econometrics, I'm Sebastian Y. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do some simple probability calculations using Stata. Stata has functions that allow us to calculate probabilities based on quite a few well-known probability distributions. Let's start with the binomial distribution. The binomial distribution has two parameters that we need to know, the number of trials remember that's basically coin flips, and the probability that the coin will land on heads, or probability of success. We can use this to calculate the probability that any number of successes will occur. As with any calculations we're going to do in Stata, we need to start with display, or DI for short. For the probability mass function, that is the probability that any individual outcome will occur, we're going to use binomial P. And then there are three pieces of information we need to give it. Number of trials, let's say 100. Number of successes, so let's say 30. And chance of success, a quarter or 0.25. This tells us that if we have 100 trials with 0.25 chance of success, there is about a 4.5% chance that we will get exactly 30 successes. Now if we want to know the probability of getting 30 successes or fewer, that is the cumulative distribution function, we use just binomial without the p, and we can put in the same pieces of information there, and we can see that there is about a 90% chance that the number of successes will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on all the way up to 30. Next we're going to look at the Poisson distribution. An individual Poisson distribution is defined by its lambda, or arrival rate. That's the only thing we need to know. For the probability mass function, we're going to use Poisson P. So you can see there's kind of a pattern here with these commands. And we need to give it the arrival rate lambda. So let's suppose that it is 5. The second value we're going to give it is the outcome that we are trying to find the probability of. So let's say 6 arrivals. We can see that is about 15% chance of happening. We can use the cumulative distribution function to see what is the probability when the arrival rate is 5 of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6 arrivals happening. So just like with binomial, we leave the p off for that one. We can see that's about 76% chance of happening. The last probability distribution we're going to look at today is the normal distribution. The thing to remember about the normal relative to these other two is that it is a continuous distribution, not a discrete distribution, and so it does not have a probability mass function, it has a probability density function. To calculate values for the density function, we're going to use normal den. We are just dealing with the standard normal with a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1, so all we need to give it here is the value of z that we're looking for. The value of the density function on its own doesn't mean a lot, but you can calculate it if you want. What we're going to be using more often is the cumulative distribution function, which we can get just with normal. Remember, this is the probability that a draw from the normal distribution will be at most the value that we give it. In a standard normal, remember that the middle of the distribution is zero, and so this is going to give us one half. One half of the time we're going to get a negative number, one half of the time we're going to get a positive number. If we want to know what's the probability that a normal draw will be between two numbers, we can also use the CDF. So for example, what is the probability that our draw is going to be between 1 and negative 1? We can subtract those values of the CDF and we get about 68%. What this tells us is that about 68% of draws from the normal distribution are going to be within one standard deviation away from the mean. The last thing that we can do with this is the inverse normal, or the quantile function. Basically, this is the opposite of what we've just done. Instead of giving it a number and then telling us the probability, we're going to give it the probability, and then that's going to tell us the z that corresponds with that on the CDF. So to do this, we're going to write inverse normal, and then we're going to give it a probability. So let's say one half. We should expect that this should give us zero, and it does, because 
it is going to be the inverse of this one right here. This has been a quick video to show you how to do statistical calculations using Stata. There's a lot more of these distributions that are out there that Stata can do, and you can look those up on your own, but these should be enough to get you started. Thanks for watching.